This is a video I wanted to do for a while, but I didn't want to open a can of worms on this because I didn't want to sound like I was reaching or have someone say, well, you already have a black character. God, you're asking for so much. All I want to see is diverse characters paving the way in storytelling without their agency being taken away. It's happened too many times and I just feel like I had to say something before it keeps going on. And with Turning Red coming out in March 2022, I better talk about it before the discourse gets fired up again. Anyway, having non-white main characters spend most of the movies not in their human body. It all started with Cusco, who is a lead character of Inca descent, who gets transformed into a llama for majority of the movie, which is called the Cusco Effect. Characters that were affected by the Cusco Effect include Kinai, Tiana, Lance, and Joe. This is about how these non-white lead characters are getting restricted from not being in their own human body for an animated movie. They don't get to be in their own skin for most of the movie, which is questionable and problematic as hell. I'm focusing on the last three characters because I'm black, and I'm black, Whenever I see a headline that says the studio is going to have the first black animated character, I'm like, why now? But also, I care about how they portrayed this character. With the history of black representation in entertainment, a lot of the depictions of black families and black people aren't in the best light, which is very upsetting because most of those stereotypes are stigmatized in society and how most people view us. And it really shows how people just look at our skin color and just assume they're worse than us. And that hurts. It gives off this message to a lot of people by saying, my skin tone isn't valuable enough to carry out a movie, or we are valuable in the animation industry, but we just play the sidekick animal or whatever it is, but never the lead. So I'm going to start off with Tiana. Back in my Disney video, I mentioned how I didn't care about Tiana being a frog for most of the movie. And I admit it's hard for me to shake that off because the princess and the frog was based on the frog prince and the frog princess. I think people seem to forget how in the frog princess, the princess kisses the prince who was a frog and turns into a frog herself. Also to mention that Tiana's character is based on the late chef Leah Chase, who was also a native in New Orleans. It also didn't help that in the original production, Tiana was going to be a servant named Madeline, or Maddie for short. Which thank the heavens that was changed during production. Me admitting that Tiana got the short end of the stick felt like I had to let go of Tiana being my idol as a kid, which is upsetting. If there was a chance to rewrite the story, I think dropping the frog princess for story material would be a good start. Or you can have Tiana kiss Naveen, but it doesn't work. So then she helps him get back to human through a series of adventures and exploring New Orleans. They can learn about each other, fall in love, kiss again, and boom, he's human because it's a kiss of true love. Despite everything, it's impossible for me to hate Tiana. She meant a lot to me as a 10 year old and I still love her dearly. I saw a passionate and enthusiastic black woman who wanted to make her dreams a reality. It makes me happy that there are people out there who care about Tiana as much as I do. One day, I hope to meet Nika Noni Rose and tell her how much Tiana meant to me. Whenever the Tiana series comes out, I hope they allow Tiana to be a businesswoman, cooking in her restaurants, and having a loving marriage with Naveen, and not a frog hopping in a swamp again. So let's hope for that. The next character is Lance. Now that's hot. That's hot. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. Spies in Disguise is based on a short called Pigeon Impossible. After drinking Walter's experiment, Lance becomes a pigeon and stays like this for most of the movie. This one doesn't offend me as much since the movie is ridiculous on its own with its childish humor, like getting kicked in the nuts jokes and the bleep like, haha, <laughs> funny. However, it conveys a message on bad guys and how you can handle them from harming other people. This was Blue Sky's first and last appearance of a main character being black. Now, how would I fix this situation? My suggestion is have Walter turn himself into a pigeon, so he can join Lance in his spy missions as his sidekick. That way, Lance can learn from Walter on how to handle bad guys. There's a conflict of Walter convincing Lance to handle bad guys differently and suggests Lance to use his inventions. You see, it will be Walter's willing choice to turn himself into a pigeon and not some unforeseeable mishap that happens. Boom! Totally fixed the movie. But you know what is weird? This is the third time that Will Smith plays a blue character. And the last character is Joe. I feel like Soul came at the wrong place at the wrong time, but it was still necessary to have a movie like this. Cause it's cool and all to have Kim Powers be the co-director, but why wasn't he nominated for an Oscar along with Pete Docter? I'm just saying give credit where credit is due. I wasn't upset that Joe was killed in the first 10 minutes of the movie because with the trailer, I had the assumption that Joe was going to go through an inside out experience. I had an impression that this would be temporary and Joe gets back into his human body for the price of finding the true meaning of life and earning a second chance. More specifically, the biggest gripe I have with Joe in the movie is the body swap. The whole body swap irks me as 22 was speaking as Joe while Joe was in the body of a cat. I was fine with this because it was 22 and Joe having the conversations together and nobody else surrounding them. 
However, I despise that I had to hear 22 talking as Joe between other characters. From the moment where 22 talks to the doctor, Connie, and the barbershop scene really pissed me off. It kind of messes with the unspoken rule that everybody in the movie has no idea that it's 22 talking as Joe. This is unrelated, but I hate Tina Fey for reasons being. Sorry, I don't like the idea of a white woman talking in a black man's body in the blackest setting of the movie. The blame is on Mike Jones, who suggested that Joe should be in a cat's body. While I agree that Joe should have a different perspective of life throughout the movie, I think there could have been a better way to showcase that without him being in the body of a cat. Okay, so imagine, Joe and 22 accidentally fall and get back on Earth, right? Joe is in his own body, while 22 is in the body of someone else. It could be a kid, teen, old patient in the hospital, any human body, but not Joe's. The two get out of the hospital and explore the wonders of New York. With 22 being in a human body, they can still gain the knowledge and experience the things that makes life so incredible. I think this could work greatly if 22 is in the body of a child, since children can see life differently and their imagination also goes wild. 22 can see Joe talking to Connie about the trombone, get a haircut from the barber shop, talk to the seamstress ladies while Joe tells his mother about how much the concert means to him. Also, having the mom ask, where did the kid come from? And the cherry on top could be 22 seeing Joe perform at the jazz concert. I also think we should add an emotional element to make the movie have a bigger impact. Give 22 an undiagnosed condition, leading to Joe having to explain to 22 about their condition, death, and how people have limited time to do the things that they want to do. Still having the important conversations on finding your purpose and reflecting on how you live your life. To make it even more heartbreaking, Jill finishes the concert and sees that something happens to 22 and rushes them to the hospital. Or, Jill misses the concerts because 22 had an emergency and stays with them for their final moments. Jill could go to the great before as he's in the zone, tries to find 22, and discovers that they already went to the great beyond. Maybe 22 can leave something behind for Joe, like a letter or an object, which can make Joe embrace life for every second. I know it's more depressing than the original story, but if we're really talking about life and our purpose, let's go there. Unfortunately, people could die at any age, whether if it's a medical condition, an accident, diseases, or old age. Some people aren't at a certain age to get to experience life as much as others, and it would be more complex yet groundbreaking moment to explore that section. I don't recall really seeing any young souls in the great beyond, so it makes you think. Ah, why am I not on Pixar's writing team right now? Then again, I can't come up with such wonderful wordplay such as Melephant Brooks, Cheryl Burnett, Bitey White, and Carl Rhinoceros. No wonder they won that Oscar. It goes to show that having a black co-director doesn't really fix everything when you want to tell a black story. How can animation studios avoid this trope from happening again? Maybe hiring more people from different cultures and backgrounds. Representation is important on screen, but it's extremely crucial to have the same representation behind the scenes. A studio can't be successful if you don't have more people to consult with or give notes on. I think animators and writers need to look back on their past movies and unlearn the things that they did to avoid making the same mistakes happening again. I know studios need to make money and deadlines and budgets have to be met, but I think it's more important to have more voices in the room, writer's room, animation room, from people of said race to talk about their own story. Or we keep having more conversations about a director or writer who is incapable to tell the minority story when they're not even part of the minority. With Turning Red, it seems like May is in this trope because she's transformed into a red panda whenever her emotions are overwhelmed as a curse that runs in her family. At least May is in control with her curse and isn't permanently a red panda for most of the movie. I'm sure the movie is meant to be harmless fun of a girl going through adolescence, puberty, but in a Pixar way. So I think that wraps up this video. I don't think animation studios are doing it deliberately just to attack the minority since they're not white. However, it's a pattern that has happened too often and needs to be addressed. We've seen movies where non-white main characters are in their own bodies without relying on tropes or stereotypes. Racial identity should never be erased or hidden. It should be embraced! I want to see more characters from different backgrounds and identities that have wonderful stories be told in animation because have we had enough white protagonists dominate storytelling? Let me know what you think about the trope or any other characters you felt like were affected by the Cusco effect because we want to see our stories and culture be represented accurately and everybody deserves to feel represented. Thank you for watching my video and I'm signing off.